Howdy folks, I'm going to keep this intro short because this is going to be a long uh, segment or a long, um, long video overall, but basically I finished with the, the major machining operations for the tilting lever. Made a couple of mistakes, I'll, I'll discuss those in, in depth in each of the segments that are to follow. But this is what it looks like finished and I'm really happy overall with how it came out. So please stay tuned and enjoy the remaining, <laughs> it's, like I said it's going to be long, probably a half hour, maybe even longer when I put all the segments together for the machining the tilting bracket. Hey folks, for this step I just want to show I've carefully laid out the centers of the various holes. You can't see the one at the top because it's hidden behind this piece of reinforcing metal here, but this is the original center of the distance where if I was using the clamp that I would be drilling a hole if I was using the split casting, but instead I'll be using a split cotter, so my, I'm offsetting it to this place, but I'm not going to be machining that right now. As you can see, I'm using the rotating tailstock. I've placed a, a center punch hole after carefully marking out where the center is for this. This is the center of the pivot where the hole and the cone will be made. So that's the first thing I'm going to do to this casting. Now that I've got it centered, I just I went ahead and I made sure everything was super tight here. So I'll be backing up the tailstock and replacing that with the drill chuck, tailstock drill chuck, so I can drill the holes first, and then I'll be using the 20 degree angle and a boring tool to bore out the hole to fit the, the, um, the cone-shaped bolts that I described in the earlier video. Drilling the pilot hole at 70 RPM with a large center drill. And here I've got the one thou oversized, the 3 8 inch plus the one thou, so 0.376 inch reamer. Just to ream the hole out, make it perfect. Although that part shouldn't end up being doing any weight bearing, it couldn't hurt to have it nice and clean and symmetric. Here I'm boring out with a, the 20 degree angle with a little carbide boring bar. I've just taken the first cut so far. I'll go through, do it again. Coming in. Got the lathe up to a couple hundred RPM. And I'm going to stop and take a test pass. I'll just finish this out without videoing it because I need both hands in full concentration. But just thought I'd show the setup. Alright, here's a shot of the setup. I may actually have to replace this cutter with the longer one because there's not a lot of clearance between the uh, top slide and the, the piece of work spinning around there. But this is a much better setup overall angle for the cutting. You can see that. You can see why I'm worried about the clearance. So I'll just leave it be at this point and make a couple more passes, give it a little test, and I'll bring you back when this hole is all the way bored out. But you can see it's got a pretty pretty nice look there. A little cone hole in the work. I still have to face that off, so that'll take care of some of the irregularity that you're seeing. I did clean my lathe in case you're wondering if I bought a new one. No, I just cleaned it up with some WD-40 and some rags, paper towels. One thing I learned, I've just figured out, this uh, cutter that is closest to you, the short one, this is the one I was just using a second ago and I was getting a decent cone shape, but it was jamming up because the thing is too wide for the hole, as tiny as that is in relative terms. So I just took another one with a slightly longer stem on it and I just ground away, as you can see, I ground away a bunch of clearance there, hoping that's enough. We'll see. I'll find out in a few minutes when I try it again. But that's something important to think about with the uh, with the tool that you're using. I think that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna be okay. So interesting study and setups here. Hey, I'm pretty stoked because I just finished taking the last cut. Let me see if I can put the flashlight on. Ooh, it's pretty bright. But uh, just took the last cut with my modified boring tool. See if I can 
insert this is the the actual cone that will be used for the locking cone it will go outside as you can see I made the eighth inch straight shoulder on it and I don't know if you can tell on the video or not but it sits inside just a teeny bit and I did that on purpose because I still have to face the the outside of the indicator arm or finger I'll do that tomorrow it's kind of late tonight so that's why I wanted to make the the bolt and the nut and the cotter and everything ahead of time so that I could use those for test fits and let me try the little stub this is the stub arbor that I made there we go so you can see that I did not put a shoulder on that my fingers in the way so you can't see that very well but it sits nicely and um, this will be used to hold this in place, the part in place, while I'm machining the other side. That's the idea here. So I'm going to, what I'll do is tomorrow I'll take a skim cut off the indicator arm and I'll leave this setup available. I still haven't moved the top slide since I made these things on Saturday. Tonight's Monday night. So if I need to to a bore one more time once I if I take off too much material and I need to increase the size of the cone I'll be able to do that very easily well I couldn't resist doing the uh, cutting up the cutoff work or cleanup work on the indicator arm a little bit and as I mentioned in the last video well let me show you what the setup here just in case you're trying to replicate this switched over to a conventional carbide cutter and um, Obviously you can see the angle, but I still haven't touched the angle of the top slide in case I have to come back and rebore, which pretty sure I'm going to have to do. <laughs> I had to take off about a sixteenth of an inch or a little bit more to clean the face up. But it cleaned up real nice, so I'm going to set the boring bar up and I'll bore it out again in the next segment. Bore it out to the right depth. In this clip, what I'm showing, I've got the lathe set at 70 RPM. It's now Tuesday night. I bored out the hole a little bit more so I had a good fit on the little stub arbor that I'm going to use for locking. And I'm very, very carefully, because of low clearance, clearing out. I've, I've just trimmed the edge of the pointer to two inches from the center. I set up my tool by indexing it off my revolving center, rotating center there, and then so obviously four inches on the x-axis on the DRO is two inches radius. So what I'm going to do now is take off about 20 thou for clearance. So I'll go to 980, 3980, 3979 there, and I'll, I'll show you how slowly I'm feeding this. I'm feeding by hand. You can hear the little ticks. Tick, tick tick like that. That's the interrupted cut. That's why I'm going so slowly and feeding so slowly. And I've set my z-axis zero to the point I need to stop in order not to crash the tool into the jaws. So I've got 190 thousandths left to go, just about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I've only taken about five or six cuts. My uh, index pointer it was not that long, it just, just a little bit of trimming to get it down to size. So I'm going to do this, and when I have it down with a little clearance there, then I'll uh, also put a little angle, a little bevel angle on that. I'll take a picture of that. Okay, I fed the cutter in another 10 thou or so, so I've got about 30 thou, 32 thou clearance. This is, in other words, this uh, radius should give us a 32 thousandths clearance between the um, bottom of the pointer arm and the uh, arc, the degree arc on the rotating, uh, excuse me, the uh, work head base. So the next thing I'm going to do, in case you're wondering why I've got the cutter set up this way, my plan, I need to put a little bevel in the bottom of the pointer arm. So I'm going to adjust the cutter a little bit and just come in from uh, right to left in this direction here. I'll take a picture of that in a second. And if you're worried about the little burr on the bottom here, that's uh, I'm going to clip that off at the at the end. That's I could probably just file that off. There's a little bit of a little uh, five thou burr or something. I didn't want. Matter of fact, I'll I'll go ahead and file that thing off now. I just didn't want to 
crash my cutter into the jaws. Okay, this seems to be working out pretty well. I'm at 56 thou. I think I can get it all the way to 62 thou from my little bevel. 61. There we go. 62 and a half. All right. I'm gonna call that good. And let's cut the power off and we'll see how it looks. I checked it a second ago. It looked pretty good. Hopefully it'll stop in an opportune position. Well, not exactly. Here, let me bump it for you. See if I can make it come around. There we go. Yeah. So that's looking good. You can see I filed that bottom part down. It has a little ridge here. I was thinking of trying to blend that out, but actually now that I think about it, the ridge is kind of cool because eventually when I assemble everything together, I'm going to need to put a mark there. So if the ridge is there, it'll make the mark probably a little easier to see. So I'm just going to leave that like it is for now. If I need to blend it out later, I could always file it. So I'm going to dress this, uh, some sharp edges here with the file and plan my next move. I, like I said, I already bored out the center for the good fit and I used the um, reamer again for the 3 8 inch reamer just to clear out any ridges that have uh, accumulated inside the hole. Okay, sharp-eyed observers will note that I've turned a part around so that I could mill this the indicator finger, that's what I'm calling it, down to a final thickness of a quarter of an inch. I'm not sure it makes much of a difference. I did finish milling the I'll show you. I, I milled the back of the tilt arm, tilting bracket, down as close as I could get it with the, uh, get this out of the way, I'll show you real good here. With an end mill, but you can see it's pretty much flush with the other surfaces. I didn't want to take it any thinner. And the book says, well, if you look at the dimensions in the book, it, it doesn't really specify exactly, but the thickness does matter. It matters for a couple reasons. Um, but basically, I think you're shooting for at least an inch and an eighth. Like um, this thickness right here that I'm showing with my fingers. So what I ended up with, because as you can see, if I'd taken off a lot more material, I would have been into the other surfaces. This is thicker than that, but I think it's going to be fine. Let me show you. I, have, I need to deburger this thing, but I put a 5 16 inch drill bit in there just for a, something to give me a, an indication. And as you can see, I mean, it fits nice. The, um, it, there's good clearance. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's good clearance. And I think we'll be fine as far as this thing goes. I may need to relieve the back of it because I don't think I'm going to be able to get it all the way to 35 degrees. And when I say the back, I mean over in this area where it's hitting that. And then here, that tilts good that way. So I might take off a little material here. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but pretty actually very pleased with how this has come out so far. The next operations are going to probably be the trickiest because what I need to do is put this thing back in the lathe and bore the conical hole in the back side here. And then more tricky still is put it in the lathe and bore a half inch hole down there through the center and then. Uh, turn a 45 degree angle inside here, turn the outside diameter to one inch, that's not terribly critical. But that's why I want to go ahead and open this up so I could put the split cotter in. I'll glue that in place so that when I do bore that hole it'll have something solid to go through. And then the other operations are machining the outside and the inside of this arc so that they'll clear whenever I finally machine the rotating base. So I've been, I've got playing around with some ideas. I'll show you in better detail when I uh, get to that step, obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, but kind of what I have in mind, as you can see here, is putting this part on here, actually probably cutting off a much shorter piece of this two inch aluminum square and then having the top part stick out so that when I get done I can machine that cone first with this thing on the center obviously and this clamp down that's why I have these are some clamps I used for when I machine my locomotive rods some angle iron that I machine square and I clamp this in the vise 
and I used these clamp, steel clamps to hold down the aluminum part and it worked fine. So I was thinking about borrowing some of those clamps for the purpose of holding down the little indicator finger and while well, this is bolted down on the on the stub so that shouldn't be too too difficult with this thing on the center but then it's got to be sticking up like this for the final so that'll be interesting to see how that works out I'll keep you posted on that hey folks wanted to show the setup before I start machining this is obviously the tilting bracket and I've bolted it to a piece of two inch square aluminum tubing that I'm holding in the fore jaw and I'm, I've got it bolted the uh, the little stud arbor stub arbor is bolted through I, I waited until I had the, the, the stock center or you know held in the fore jaw securely and then I, I turned the this flat with the turning tool this surface and then drilled and tapped it for the 5 16 inch 24 and then happily there was enough space to put a, a nut on it back there I did have to file the stub arbor down a little bit so that this would lay flat but now so I'm, I'm quite certain I've got it flat flush and on center here I'll show you so you can see the, the center hole so now I can bore out I still after all this time I have not adjusted the angle setting I haven't moved this at all from the time I made these pieces last weekend so this is the side let me show you here this will be the the back side basically that this part will fit in it's hitting the stub arbor now so I won't be able to use this as a test piece but it's identical to the cone which goes in the front so I can use that as a test piece as I bore this out so I'll progress and bore that out and bring you back when I'm about finished all right just about done with the boring process let me show you the little split collet that will go on the outside it's probably hard to see with the little cell phone camera but I can tell it's just a little bit shy of fully seating with the shoulder there so I'm going to take a couple more cuts I thought I'd show a video of that I got the lathe set on 220 rpm which is much as I it, it's it's a good speed setting probably plenty for this purpose and with a unbalanced load like that you don't want to go too fast so here I'm feeding it in by hand Easy, steady feed, pretty slow. When I back it out, you'll see some of the brass or bronze pieces fly out. I need to clean out the hole again. I'm sure I'm raising a little bit of the lip inside here. Chips come out when we retrieve the tool. I always take a couple of spring passes. You can definitely tell you're going to get a little bit of extra cut with the spring pass. Be careful because the I'm being careful because I'm so close to the, the rotating mass there. That's the first spring pass. Brush I use for clearing chips and stuff. Turn it off. Let's see how it fits now. Looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now, uh, that's enough of the demonstration, but I'll take my deburring tool and deburr the edge a little bit and check the fit again. If I need to, I could take a couple more thou off, but I think I'm about there. Okay folks, just a final update. Using the cone, which is going to go on the opposite side, but should be identical, I've a deburred. I used my deburring tool 
this thing here and carefully deburred the outside edge of the hole there took off the rim there certainly was a a rim I don't know if you can see yeah you can kind of see inside there the little stub arbor and where the the cone comes in, almost like a you can see the inside is like the two cones like an inside a an injector or a rocket nozzle or something like that and that's the fit it's really nice um, there's just no wiggle no nothing it's perfect so I mean even kind of wants to stay in there ringing so to speak um, like gauge blocks well not quite as perfect as that because the finish is nowhere near like a gauge block but it ha has that feel to it so I'm really happy with that ordinarily I would go ahead and take it down and get ready the you know the next step is going to be to bore out the center a half inch hole and a 45 degree diameter inside and also clean up the outside of this and then the inside and outside arcs but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to hold this piece played around it's probably going to be the four jaw some variation just not quite sure so I'm going to kind of leave it like this for tonight think about it a little bit more and I'll bring you back for that exciting conclusion if you will all right, got the tilting bracket. I took it out of this. Um, this is the device I used to machine the other cone bore. I wanted to show how the stud fit in and how the strap, the hold down strap. I just I cut this off. It was a little bit longer. I cut it off because I was kind of thinking maybe I could somehow figure a way to clamp it in the fore jaw and use it that way. But it would the offset would have been ridiculous and just wasn't a good idea. So let me. Uh, show you what I come up with so far. I'm not for sure that I'm going to use this setup, but it, it, I think I will. The only drawback to this one is that I'm, I won't be able to machine the, the uh, bottom part of the outside of the um, tilting arm, tilting bracket, but I could always put it on a half inch arbor later and do it that way. And so here's the setup. I've got it in the fore jaw. I'm using a couple of pieces of steel various sizes to help spread the load and make sure I don't mess things up and I've got it centered there pretty well and tightened up you can see the other thicker piece of steel it's about a 3 8 inch piece of steel there and a 1 8 over here to get it to the center that away and then the got the the opposite four jaw out there and got it, it tightened up I think this is gonna work because the op the operations that need to happen now um, turning the outside of this to a one inch diameter, turning the in or boring the center of it to a half inch for the stem of the rotating the tool holder, and then turning a cone, a 45 degree conical, you know, the, the center of this needs to be turned to a 45 degree cone to help um, seat the rotating base. Then the simple turning the inside and outside diameters of this uh, this arm so it's a little bit of a involved work it should be fun and um, it's always tenuous when you're when you're machining a casting because if you goof it up you either have to make one out of solid or buy a new casting so that's why I've taken my time and experimenting with different setups here but I think I'm good now you can see the I've got the little brass cotter glued in there the 9 inch cotter and you can see it's going to have a good amount of overlap for the half inch bore there that uh, will come in the center bore. So there we have it. And uh, I'll follow up and show you the machining steps. I just wanted to, well, I, and I even removed the tool, tool rest here just so I could get a clearer view on that. But I think that's going to work and I'll bring you back for the machine. All right, so I've turned the outside. You probably can see it going around. And I'm working on turning the inside of the, I guess for lack of a better word, the indicator arm that sticks up. We've got about, well after this, we've got about 75 thousandths more to go. So I'm taking 25 thou of diameter measure in you know, 12 and a half thou deep cut. And you can see I'm going at 70 RPM and you can see it, see and hear that it's quite a cut. So I wouldn't want to go any faster than that or any more aggressive. 
I just to make a couple more passes like this, and then I'll be done with the little indicator line part. And I can work on the center. I've already turned the top pieces and the center of the top. I'm turning the inside portion of the tilting bracket. I've got the speed up since this is not an interrupt. A, a cut, the first couple of cuts were a little bit interrupted since I was addressing the rough part of the casting. Since this is not really interrupted anymore, I've got the speed up and I'm cutting at about 220 RPM. Manually feeding it slowly by hand just to be extra careful in case anything happens to go wrong. And going down to about a depth of, from the surface, is about 575,000. That's about all it'll go until it starts to run into the other pieces of the base there. And I'm just taking off about 20,000 at a time. You can see I got about 50,000 more to go. So let's do three more cuts. Let's go about 15,000 or so. I'll just keep doing this. I'll bring you back when I got this done. All right, folks, I've got the center turned down to an inch. Looks really nice. And then um, getting ready to center drill it. Now this is pretty much the easy part, I think, now. And what I wanted to show, I, do, I love this tap paste stuff. Um, you can just Google it. It's made in America, made in Oklahoma. It's pink, and it doesn't stink at all. It doesn't smell like... doesn't smell like petroleum anyway I'm not sure what's in it but I like using it for drilling and tapping any like slow speed operations so here we go doing the center drill and I'll just make successive drill operations drill holes here drill it and ream it to a half an inch for the length Like I said, it's pretty much the easy part. Just taking it slow. I won't bore you with a lot of video of this. I thought I'd show you what it looks like. Alright, got it all the way drilled out already. And I'm um, still running at 70 RPM. I've got a 1,000 oversized reamer that I've coated up with that tap paste stuff and running it through just to make sure I have a nice, smooth, uniform hole there for the table and the rotating base. Set up for All right, folks, I'm making progress on machining the bevel. What's interesting is you can see here, let me get the light on it. I've put a little bit of blue ink around the edge because I don't want to machine this down to get a knife, a knife edge. I also I noticed on the prints they talk about the uh, 45 degree bevel should be a quarter of an inch you can't see this without the flashlight shining in there but i set my little depth gauge at a quarter inch and it's almost there so i'm going to take a couple more cuts and i'll bring you back one well let's see i'll, I'll show you one i'm uh, still using about uh, 220 rpm and i put a stiffer boring bar on this time can hear it. Oops. The reason I put the blue sharpie marker there, I did not want to machine this bevel and make a knife edge at the end. I wanted to leave about a sixteenth of an inch flat seat for the table, the rotating base. Alright, so there's a cut. And again, feeding by hand here. I set the 45 degree angle. I also, I used a bevel gauge, a woodworking bevel gauge, to, when I had this set at the uh, prior 22 degrees, or 20 degrees, I um, locked that in on my bevel gauge so that I can, um, if I have to replicate it, I'll be able to do that if I need to remake any of those parts for the other. So let me crank this back, and let's take a look. Again, it's going to be hard without the flashlight, but... I think this is the idea they had in mind. Yeah, I think I need to go a little bit more. As you can see, I probably have about a sixteenth of an inch or so, a little bit more than that seat on the edge. Probably one or two more very light cuts on the 45 degree bevel and I'll be fine.
All right, I'll finish before I take this out. I thought I'd do one more shot. I did pass the reamer through there one more time. So I think we're looking good here. Um, I will also point out I did test fit a 5C, a 1 inch 5C collet on the outside diameter here and I did file a rough spot off of there just so if I do need to come back and remachine any of this um, I have an idea about grasping it in the 5C collet on this side and running a half inch arbor through the center and using rotating tailstock to support the work in case, well I've, I've been thinking about that in order to finish this part up right here of the uh, little indicator arm so from now, I'll take this out, deburr it, clean it up a little bit, show you what I got. The next things are just to mark the center here and to uh, cut a 3 8 inch slot and make that little bevel here, which I can't do that on the lathe. I'm going to have to do that on the mill or figure out a different way. The 5C collet might come in very handy, a collet block. I'm, we'll have to we'll play with some options, probably get that done tomorrow. Okay, here's the tilting bracket in place. You can see the top of in the 45 degree angle and going a quarter inch deep and, and that, that I left a little flat seat here. It's about 25 thou wide, which is, I think that's going to be good for the purpose of not creating a knife edge. So I'm real happy with how that came out. Let me twist this up a little bit. You can see that, um, and I've just got it loosely together here tilt angle is going to be fine on this in this direction and on this direction here I'm going to need to relieve the outside of this a little bit and one other and if I want to be able to tilt it over to 35 degrees which I would like to do another note is I used only what was it I think it was 800 thou offset from the center here to the center of this and that's just not enough. I did actually cut into the threads on this, so I think I'm going to have to remake my little split cotter. What I can do, it wasn't a big amount of cutting into the threads. I could either reduce the threads on the through bolt if I need to, or if that's not an option, I could always, instead of the 5 16 24 thread, I could use a smaller, like a 10-24, um, so a number 10-24, and then I'll just have to remake the cotter and cut that the arc again that I've done I had that something like that happened on the pillar tool I forget which one it was but it's not not a big deal to remake so I thought I'd point that out just a, a way to recover from your errors but overall I'm really pleased because the work holding and everything of what I thought was going to be a real challenge well it was a real challenge but it looks fine pretty pleased by how it all looks here so the next thing to do uh, tomorrow, it's kind of late on Saturday night now, tomorrow I will cut the slot and then file or figure out a way to mill the angle there and then also put this in the 5C collet and um, turn that down, make this all matching like I was talking about before, just kind of clean it up and finish it. But real pleased with the major machining operations, look fine, it seems to, it seems to have come out well. Just at this stage, I just wish I would have made the offset a little bit more, another hundred thou or so, I would have been fine. Alright, so thanks for watching, I'll be wrapping this thing up soon. Pretty pleased. In this segment you can see I've got the tilting bracket mounted in the 5C collet chuck. I've got a one inch collet holding onto the very top of it that we just machined the V in. And the reason I'm just doing this, I put the half inch rod through the center and um, have the uh, rotating tailstock in there to give it support so I can just machine off this rough part. Here. Okay, I got the bulk of it removed by hand. I'm running it on the automatic feed right now. Just the final cleaning up cut. Let's see how we did here. That looks like a pretty nice finish to me. Yep, sweet. All right, looking good. Off to the next step. Here we are back in the mill, milling the slot down 219 thou from the top. That was the final cut there. And now I'll, I'll cut this off and I've got to angle this 30 degrees so I can put the little bevel in there. So I've got some angles. I'll set that up in a minute. And here's the setup for the milling the little bevel there. I've got a 30-60-90 triangle and I basically just 
align that by eye, it, you know, it's probably not perfectly 30 degrees, but I think the more important part is how I'm holding it and the uh, cutter is still centered exactly the same way as it was before. So I'll have at it and start machining. Okay, this is another little video. You can see I laid out the dimensions of the bevel beforehand. I think you can see little scribe marks. Seems to be going pretty well. Here's the back side. I'm pretty happy with the setup. That's funny, I meant to remove my little angle plate there. Looks like I just have another cut or two to go.